up for some culture here at Great Park. There are several new exhibits taking place and there's a band performing, all with one common theme. It's all about the bass. Cynthia Castaneda is the co-creator here at Great Park Gallery on the former El Toro Marine Base, the subject for this exhibit, Life on the Base, a collection of candids and bound books depicting oral histories of those who served. Back in the early 2000s, the Cal State Fullerton Lawrence DeGraff Center for Oral and Public History um, put together a project that was dedicated to interviewing former El Toro service members. They went out and did the research and interviewed over 500 uh, service members. These are members who lived here from the 1940s until the 1990s when the base closed. All the photographs that you see here, I found them and scanned them. I had like a digital scanner that I took with me to the archives and I scanned every single one of them. And then after I picked the broad finalists, we decided to um, summarize it or tighten it down to just a handful that really got the point across. Now the pictures are great because it does show that this was not just war and all that, but people lived here. Particularly the, uh, the sports they played, you know, and I didn't realize they had a women's team here too. And to read about uh, their, their own perspective about what it was like you know, here on the base, day in, day out. Read about them renting or just checking out bikes and going on a ride down to Tustin, for example. Someone who knows what life was actually like on base from 1987 until 1992 is Alan DeHenke. He was involved in aviation operations. It was just a big part of Orange County, and now a lot of people don't even realize what El Toro was. And so it's great to have this memorialized and feel very proud and thank everyone that's involved. It's, it's amazing because it, 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 I, I want to cry. As far as living on base? They had a bowling alley. I remember the movie theater, our own commissary. They had a mall. Um, they had a golf course, horseback riding. It was really a lot of fun. An exhibit like this, my goal was, yes, it was decades ago, but we live this life today in many ways. We come play sports. We come enjoy the day to day. We come for the music and the parties. And that's what these service members did. Yes, they were part of the military, but they were regular everyday people just like us. Across at the artist studio, you'll find the great picture packed inside its crate. The world's largest photograph created by the largest camera six photographers known as the Legacy Project. We didn't know what we were getting into and for the next year we were fundraisers, politicians, construction workers, engineers, anything but artists because it was uh, a lot of work to convert an aircraft into a giant pinhole camera. Shortly after the base was decommissioned, Clayton Spada tells us that's when he and other members of his team received access to the base. They had plans to go big, really big. The size is massive, three stories by 11 stories. Now because of the size, there are very few places where you can actually hang it, but it was on tour at Art Center in Pasadena because they had a similar hangar at one time. It's been in New Orleans, it's been in China and Beijing, and it's been at the Smithsonian. I think anyone, myself included, who was involved in it, it's a weird high point. It's a weird high point. There's no question about it. It's a remarkable thing that requires hundreds of people to help to make it happen. And then you end up in the Guinness Book and have an object that really is a unique, unique thing. At a time when there's millions of photos pinging around the world every single day, this photograph is just a remarkable thing. To see more on these exhibits and the band's performance schedule, visit our website. For Irvine Scene, I'm Jacqueline Twagg.